Hello and welcome to Azure Lane Meta. If after this video you want to help support the channel, please check out my affiliate store at kit.co slash Azure Lane Meta. Welcome back guys. Today we have another data mine for the Lunar New Year event for 2022. There are a lot of things going on in this patch notes aside from the new Chinese ships. So we're going to go through the patch notes, talk about the new missile mechanics and all sorts of fun. So let's start with the patch notes and then we'll get into the ships specifically. And just in case you haven't been following my Twitter, we are getting new ships. We're getting Chenhai, Bristol, Charibidus, Haitian, Haichi, and retrofits for Ashan and Chengcheng. If you're like me and you retired your Chengcheng and Ashan, that's okay because we are going to have opportunities to get them. There is going to be a rerun of Fushin's event as well as Ashan's event, giving you access to those ships again. The Happy Lunar New Year 2022 event will allow you to get Chengcheng, Taiyan, Ninghai, and Pinghai as a selectable. You only get to pick one of them, but if you're missing Chengcheng, you can obviously pick that ship. Bristol, Charbus, and Chenhai are going to be right up in the light construction pool for a limited time. Yingsui, Choho, and Penelope, which are not new ships, are coming back as permanent additions as well to the light construction pool. And then Haijian and Hai Chi are going to be available from participating in the World Within Painting mini event. Basically, once you finalize the painting in the event, you're going to get the rewards of those ships. So overall, should be very easy to get all of the new ships. On top of that, we're going to be getting a mystery investigation, which is going to be a world boss fight, and we're going to be taking down Bristol one of the new ships. This is important because one of the new equipment, which is one of the missile equipments, is going to be attainable through the points that we can get here. So you do want to do this. And like every Lunar New Year in the past, we're going to be getting the Manju Resort, which is going to give us red envelopes, a traditional Chinese celebration for Lunar New Year, and they are going to give us free gems. So that's fantastic. Make sure you log in at least. We're going to be getting a new challenge mode season 11. So fun for me. Maybe we'll do some competition stream or something like that. We get a ton of new skins, including L2Ds. Chennai and Pennsylvania are going to have rental outfits for those new skins. Also, we're getting close to the end of the month, so we're going to be updating the cruise missions at the end of the month. So February 1st, these effects go into play, not after the update today. But that's going to bring a new Columbia skin for the paid version. And Junio Meta is going to be joining us for the next cruise mission season. Ying Sui is also going to be getting a rerun of her limited outfits event. We're going to be getting new items in the shop like the Lunar New Year Lucky Bag. The core data shop is going to be updating. We're going to get Kimberly's skin in there as well as a new item. This is the SY1 missile. This is the guided missile destroyer gear. We'll talk about that more when we get into the new mechanic updates for destroyers, but there is going to be new core data shop. Of course, this is going to come with the next reset of the core data shop, which comes on February 1st. So this is not coming at this update, but keep that in mind. We're getting new furniture for the Chinese estate and skin boxes as well. New New memory for Ulrich von Houten. Justagram is going to get new content for Lunar New Year specifically. Also, we're getting an update to the prototype shop, and this is a big update for many new players. The PR prints for PR4 are going to be available in the prototype shop now. Also, the construction for regular weapons for PR4, not the Tenrai, but like the, the ones that are lower, are going to be available for purchase in the prototype shop. And Drake's gun is coming to the prototype shop, just like the uh, 457 that sits in the prototype shop. Now we're going to get Drake's gun. So this is pretty much setting the standard that the UR equipment will probably sit in the prototype shop for a one-time purchase two years after it releases. This is something really big for those of you who uh, wanted to potentially switch from PR4 back to PR3 to get a Drake gun. Now you can just buy the Drake gun and stick going for 10 rise in PR4 and of course PR5 when that comes out in the summer, most likely. Other than that, that covers all the patch notes outside the new cruise mission mechanics. So we're going to talk about the cruise mission mechanics now and then we'll get into into the ships and all of their stats and skills as well as the two new equipment too because those are going to be relevant now now that the new missile mechanics come into play so let's talk about those missile mechanics now there's going to be a new ship hull classification going by ddg short for guided missile destroyer the only two guided missile destroyers in the game will be the retrofit versions of ashan and cheng chung i assume we will get more in the future this looks like something that could potentially make destroyers better if they get retrofits into this classification. So what does a DDG 
have that a destroyer doesn't? Well, first of all, they don't have torpedoes anymore. They don't have the ability to launch torpedoes, and the torpedo equipment slot has been replaced with missiles. There are going to be new equipments that you can place there that we'll talk about when we get to the equipment section. But basically, you're going to be switching your equipment to these new missiles. DDG ships, or guided missile destroyers, have the very special ability of being able to be deployed in either fleet. They can be in the main fleet or the vanguard fleet. So now you can actually run like five destroyers. And in theory, when we get more of these DDGs in the future, we could run a full six destroyer fleet. I'm ready for the memes. This also means that with the Chinese light carrier coming into existence and the two new DDGs Chinese versions, we can run a full Chinese fleet now, even though they don't have like traditional backliners. In order to prevent abuse, they're going to have some cost between switching whether or not you put them in the back line, but that's really going to be pretty negligible. You're if you're gonna wanna use it, you're gonna use it. I guess during events, spending coins is not gonna be fun. Also, these missile destroyers will have a support missile strike, similar to kind of how the submarines have a support system. When they're in support mode, they end up having this basic missile that launches onto the map. It does damage here in this clip it does 10% damage. This is going to be just like the last event that we had when missiles were being dropped during the Ulrich von Hutten event. So now we're going to actually have a way to drop missiles all the time. Missiles are not going to be triggered if you go into the auto mode. So if you, you know, are clearing it with auto mode, then you're not going to get those missile strikes, which you probably don't need them if you're going to be clearing on auto anyway but just something to note you can't missile the same unit twice so once they get the debuff from getting hit by a missile you can't missile them again and of course the DDG missiles when they're used as the main gun barrage it's going to be triggered and launched through the main gun button so there's not going to be any extra new buttons that you have to program into your blue stacks or something like that affiliate link below if you want to play as your lane on your pc so anyway if you put your guided missile destroyer in your back backline in the battle it's going to basically act as if you have a salvo like it's a regular old battleship also the destroyers that are put in the backline will utilize the hidden carrier mechanic or the discovery gauge so i guess in this way they won't act like battleships they'll act more like carriers and being hidden at least so that's all the new mechanics about missile destroyers i'm really interested to see which ships get retrofitted into becoming these missile destroyers let me know down in the comments if you know of any historical ships during the World War II period that could potentially be classified as DDG ships. So with the patch notes and the new mechanics out of the way, all that we have left is the stats and skills for the new ships as well as equipment. Right here is the fleet tech for those new ships for those of you who care about fleet tech and are going for collection. I have a sneaking suspicion that most of the ships in this event are not going to be meta defining, but people who are trying to collect fleet tech are going to care about this. A lot of HP buffs, so that's not very good. But anyway, we'll get in the ships now. All right, we're going to start off with the new ships that are available. The first ones being the Hai Chi class. So we'll start with Hai Chi herself. She is an elite light cruiser. Her stats are actually pretty pitiful. Her firepower is really low. Her anti-air is pretty low. Nothing really stands out in terms of her stats. But what does stand out is her equipment is very odd. She, despite being a light cruiser, cannot equip a light cruiser gun. She has to equip a heavy cruiser gun and a destroyer gun as her auxiliary slot. Interesting also is she doesn't have an anti-air gun slot. She actually has a surface torpedo slot in that position, meaning she actually potentially has a lot of DPS with that uh, three slots of damage and she's going to completely die to any air attacks. I can tell you pretty much without looking at any of the skills that she's going to be probably unusable in like chapter 12, 13, chapter 14, you know, things like that because her anti-air is really low and she doesn't even have an anti-air gun. But we are looking at a ship that's going to be kind of interesting. She reminds me of London in terms of how she has the equipment set up. She's going to have main gun and a auxiliary gun and the surface torpedoes. Interestingly enough, also the destroyer gun, which is the auxiliary gun, is a double slot. So it almost is like, it's not really a main gun plus one, but it's like an auxiliary gun plus one. This is unique and different and adds to a lot of DPS. Unfortunately, 30% efficiency in her heavy cruiser slot is pitiful. 
So I don't know if she's going to have a lot of DPS. The firepower that she has base is 94, so that's very low. So oh, she's going to need some skills to help her out. But the equipment setup she has is very strange. And this makes sense because it's an older ship. I think it's even classified as like a protected cruiser. Like it's not even before we started like classifying different types of cruisers, light and heavy uh, historically. So very interesting in the stats that I wanted to point out. But let's go look at her skills. So skill number one, increase her own evasion by 25% at the start of the battle this is basically required if you're going to be having to dodge the planes because you can't shoot them down if there are any other uh, chinese ships in the fleet she gets more firepower and torpedoes 12 percent boost though i mean that's pretty minimal but we'll take it we'll take it launch a special barrage every three times the main gun is fired uh that's the heavy cruiser gun so it's a little bit slower enemies that are hit by this barrage will receive 12 percent more damage from this ship only though this is a good start i like everything in this it's basic but uh, uh, you know we get boosts if if we are you know having synergies we have evasion boosts and we have a uh, a hit for her so skill number one is decent skill number two lay down a smoke screen at the start of the battle with a 40 percent proc chance every 15 seconds later wow that's a really short smoke screen uh the smoke screen lasts for five seconds and it increases the evasion rate of ships within it by 40 percent the 40 percent boost is pretty standard obviously it doesn't stack with other smoke screens but it starts at the beginning of the battle and every 15 seconds afterward that's a lot of chances at smoke screen there in like pvp of course that's really good but you know anchorage just is so much better anchorage has so much survivability in the stats and other things going on you know they're not even comparable but it is interesting so she's got some survivability in that smoke screen so let's keep going when under ammo depleted debuff so like when you don't have enough ammo left in your mob fleet, she gets the following. The smokescreen proc rate is increased to 80%. That's that's real. That's a, that's a real good proc chance. She deals 15% more damage, so she's going to do that. And every 20 seconds during the battle, 50% chance to heal friendly battleships and battle cruisers in the fleet for 3.5% max HP, and that can only proc twice per battle. So in theory, you can heal 7% of all your battleships and battle cruisers. So this tells me that we expect her to be a mob, which actually plays right into everything else that she does, because she's really looking like she's going to be something that you're going to be able to tear through through a lot of light armor enemies think about this she's got the heavy cruiser gun she's got two destroyer guns shooting and she's got the torps she has the barrage too she's going to be spamming a whole bunch of projectiles into the water there so i like this ship kind of as a mob fleet nothing like meta defining of course and it's low level mobbing too because it's got to be against light armor she's not going to do much outside of light armor and she can't deal with any survivability if there are any enemy planes so really limited to lower level chapters and mobbing which you know i guess is good for newer players this is not something you're gonna really take unless you're trying to like build like a chinese only fleet all right let's move on to her sister hai tian so in terms of her stats has all the same things that hai chi has that i talked about so you know if you missed that go check that out again because it will be the same comment the only difference is she has more firepower and less anti-air pretty much but pretty negligible there i guess the more firepower could be good so let's see what her skills are so skill number one it looks the same at first but it's a little bit different increase the self evasion by 25 percent at the start of battle just like the other one if there are other chinese ships in the fleet she increases her damage by 12%, which is actually better than increasing the firepower and torpedo stat by 12%. Additionally, she launches a special barrage every three times the main gun is fired, similarly to the other one. And when Dragon Empery ships, the Chinese ships in the fleet receive a 12% firepower buff and 12% torpedo buff, and it lasts for eight seconds. So here, this skill looks largely better than Hai Chi's skill in the fact that she can like boost other Chinese ships and the damage comes pretty much guaranteed if you have another Dragon Empery ship. So I, this is probably a little bit upgraded version and the more firepower is so pretty good. We'll see. I don't know. Hai Chi's smoke screen is actually pretty decent, but we, we take a look at the second skill here. During the battle, when self is affected by a smoke screen so like under high cheese smoke screen reduce speed by eight so she gets slower in the smoke screen i guess that's good now that i think about it because if she's in the smoke screen you don't want her running outside of the smoke screen so it actually even though it seems bad because you don't want to reduce the speed it's basically saying when you go into the smoke screen she's going to slow down so you spend more time in the smoke screen thus having the higher evasion rate 
for longer. So that actually, that's a buff, despite not being a buff. That's a hidden. I like that. I like that part. She deals 12% more damage. That's great. Uh, so more synergy with her sister. And then reduce received damage by 12% when not affected by the smoke screen. This part's weird, but I guess this kind of acts as a counter if she's not under high chi smoke screen. She's going to have damage reduction to help her survive. This kind of almost makes me feel like you want her outside of the smoke screen so that she gets the damage reduction. I mean, obviously the smoke screen is so good that you probably just would take the smoke screen anyway. The 40% evasion rate versus the 12% damage reduction, you're probably going to take the the smoke screen if you can get it but it is interesting and then oh yeah i forgot to talk about the all-out assault here but every 16 times the secondary gun is fired you launch the all assault her sister also has that too the interesting part about this is it's not based on the main gun it's based on the secondary gun that's good because the destroyer gun's gonna fire faster i wouldn't particularly be using a uh, barrage gun on the ships though because they got main gun or I keep wanting to say main gun plus one, auxiliary gun plus one, so or secondary gun plus one. So you particularly don't want to throw like a bad fast shooting destroyer gun on these because most of their damage is coming from that destroyer gun. You're going to want to put probably like a French DD gun or something on them. All right, moving on, we have an HMS ship. It's been a while since we've gotten a new HMS ship, Charbitis or however I butchered that. In terms of stats, she's going to look very similar to most maids, but one thing stands out really two things stands out but they go together is the anti-air stat is very high and she's got a good anti-air gun efficiency so this is looking like potentially going to be on uh i mean probably not on like cheshire level because cheshire has extra guns but she's gonna look like she's got some good anti-air so let's see if the the skills play that up the approaching whirlpool at the start of battle increase evasion by 10 percent okay We'll take it. Every 20 seconds in the battle, 75% chance to create a swirl on the sea, dealing damage and sucking the enemies into the swirl. The swirl only lasts for one second, though. Oh, my. So we have this swirl that sucks them in. That can actually be fantastic in terms of, like, getting them positioned. And then we can freeze them with a different ship, like, Formidable or something like that. And then we can just pound them with torpedoes or whatever we want to. I really like this whirlpool idea. It's only a 75% chance to, to, to proc, so it's not dependable. It only lasts for one second, so it's not a big deal. And also, it only procs at the 20-second mark. Very rigid and not the best timing if you want to get, like, battleships and everything going. I guess it does work nicely for carriers, but... <sighs> This this skill is really cool, but when we actually think about it in practicality, I don't think I'm going to be using it. Uh, and it doesn't play anything into her strengths, really. Interesting skill. I hope they put something like this on somebody else in the future. Let's move on to skill number two. S increase the self anti-air by 6% for every two enemies shot down in the AA circle. That stacks a max five times for a total of 30%. So this goes down to her shooting down planes. Of course, she's an AA boat. This plays right into that. Shooting down planes means obviously uh, it's not going to be like a PvP thing, but she's already not a PvP ship at all. Anyways, so that doesn't really matter. I don't know. It's kind of hard to like beat out like Sandian and uh, Cheshire and Isuzu, but you know, she's trying. She's trying. These do last until the end of the battle, though. So that's nice. Those buffs stack and stay there until the end of battle. 10 seconds after the start of the battle, increased self damage by 30%. That's a lot. That's actually, that's quite a bit now that I think about it. Like, dang. So that's helpful. Self receive damage is increased by five percent that's bad okay well i i mean to be fair you're getting 30 percent more damage for taking five percent more damage so still a win-win but oh i just got it the skill's called tunnel vision i got it and that's referring to like her operation tunnel when she got sunk in real oh that makes that makes so much sense and then that's why she's dealing more damage and getting receiving more damage anyway actually now that I think about it, her name is Cherbis, too, and that's the Whirlpool. I'm just realizing I really like the skills concepts on this ship. Uh, we have Tunnel Vision, which is, you know, playing on the history, and the Whirlpool, which is playing on the name and, and the, like, the lore or whatever of the ship name. I like that. I like both of her skills. All right, anyways, let's finish what this skill does. Anyway, uh, so this 10-second buff... 
only it only lasts for 10 seconds it starts 10 seconds after the battle and then every 15 seconds after that there's a 70 percent chance that it procs again so it's going to proc at 10 guaranteed and then 70 percent chance to proc at like 25 and 40 etc okay so what do i think about this ship uh it's it's an AA boat, certainly. It's certainly not got a lot of torpedoes. It's certainly got not good firepower. It does do 30% more damage when that one skill procs, which basically makes up for a lot of the lacking there. It, but it's really an AA boat. The skills are really unique. They play really into lore. I think I talked about that. I like it. In terms of how good this ship is, this ship's not meta, really, at all. I mean, sorry, HMS. <laughs> Uh, honestly, the elite Chinese uh, light cruiser is probably better than this HMS SR light cruiser. So, yeah. Anyway, moving on. We'll go on to the SR Destroyer Bristol. So we got a USS Bristol, which is interesting because we all have ships that are kind of interested in um, kind of the Chinese area for Lunar New Year. So I like it. Uh, she is a Sumner Clash, so her stats are going to match that really good AA uh, efficiency and AA stat is around. So we have a chance. We'll see what she ends up bringing to the table for the Sumner Clash. Both of her sisters are actually good. So, skill number one, every 20 seconds after the battle started, use a searchlight to conduct an area investigation. The investigated enemy will lose 10% of their evasion rate for the next 10 seconds. This really seems like she's going to be geared for World 14. Certainly the Allen M. Sumner class ships are all for World 14, right? They got good anti-submarine warfare. They got good uh, anti-air, and uh, they also have high evasion, so they're really really built for world 14 and this searchlight really pounds that in unfortunately it's 20 seconds after the battle starts so it's a little bit slow but that should be okay most of the time i would have liked to see like 10 or 15 but you know 20 is fine it is guaranteed at least unlike uh charabitis anyway let's move on to the second skill that skill is short but you know whatever it's like uh it's like a flare I like it. Every 20 seconds after the battle starts, summon a special equipment and gain the following effects. Oh, that's interesting. Fire a special barrage. The, sp the barrage scales off the skill level. When the special equipment is present, so, you know, when it's active, uh, her hit stat or her accuracy stat and her crit rate increase by 15%. That's actually kind of nice. So she's going to be critting. Of course, it only applies to herself. So, it, you know, she's still a destroyer. <laughs> Her, her DPS ain't crazy. The special equipment only lasts for 10 seconds. So, you know, that's between the 20 and the 30 second mark, basically, or the 40 and the 50 second mark. During the battle, Alan M. Sumner class ships, ooh, she's going to have a buff for her class, will have 10% more damage to enemies that has been investigated twice. Bro, why you got to do it like that? Like, you, you had it, and then that has been investigated twice that just sentence, that part of that sentence needs to come off. Like, the investigate is part of the first skill, and I get it, but, like, it's only every 20 seconds. So the, the first investigation comes in the 20-second mark, and the second investigation comes in the 40-second mark. So literally, she doesn't buff her class until the 40-second mark, and she only does it for 10 seconds? I guess it's not 100% clear whether it lasts only 10 seconds or the whole time, but it's still a 10% boost to only her sisters. So that's like Cooper, Ingraham, and Alan Sumner currently are the only ones in the game. It also would buff herself the way it's worded. So she also buffs herself here. So that's good. But investigated twice means you got to wait 40 seconds. And by the way, if it's like a light enemy that's been like investigated the first time, but then died and then a new enemy spawns, that only been investigated once. So like... This this is only going to happen against like really big tanky bosses in like world 14 or like in operation siren or something like that big bosses because like most things are not going to survive from the 20 second mark to the 40 second mark like most most things are going to take out and like i said she's got to be with sumner class ships to benefit and it's i mean you, you're typically only going to want like one sumner all right, well, that seems kind of like a waste. Anyway, continuing. After the first summoning of the special equipment, hmm, this is worded really weird. So after the first summoning of the special equipment, all the Sumner class ships in the fleet will do 10% more damage against the enemy. So it looks like it the first time is going to do 10% extra damage, and the second beyond is going to do 20% more damage, and those are going to stack. That's that's how I read this. That's what would make the most sense. It would also be pretty much the best case scenario for this ship. Honestly... This ship looks like only for Sumner memes. I mean, 
in theory, like Sumner class can like do World 14. She's got the base stats to to do World 14, but like she does not invoke amazing at all. She the flare is kind of nice. The flare is obviously built for World 14, and then if you bring her sisters along, you can maybe get some fun. She's okay. All right, moving on, we have Chen Hai, which is actually the one or Zhen Hai, I don't, however you pronounce it in Chinese, but this one is the one I was the most excited for the whole time. I mean, obviously the retrofits I was excited for, but this one is the most exciting of the new ships. So let's talk about her. Of course, she's the first backliner for China, but of course, the retrofits are going to have their special, like, oh, they can jump in the back line too. So you're going to be able to have a uh, a full Chinese fleet now, which is really fun. But you definitely need to pick up this one if you want to do that. So before I even see what she does, I'm going to say that we need to, she's a must pick up just so that we can do full China memes. But we'll see how she is. She's obviously a light carrier, so I'm not expecting much. Maybe she's got a heal though or something uh, that makes her useful, but we'll, we'll take a look at what she's got. Stat wise, she's awful, like 300 aviation awful. Uh, that's expected for a old uh, light carrier. Oh, and did I mention she's elite? She's an elite light carrier that came out long ago. She's really old. She's got firepower though, so that's telling me that she has like a gun? All right, let's look. Oh my gosh. What is that equipment? Oh my gosh, that's so bad. All right, um, seaplanes, really? Seaplanes? This means that she doesn't even get to have like fighters or dive bombers or torpedoes. She has to use seaplanes. There is only one manageable seaplane, which is the one that you can get in the gear shop. Yeah, the Operation Siren Gear Meta Lab or whatever you want to call it. You can get the Yokosuka Suisei Model 21 that at least has a thousand pound bomb. The Saron has a 1600 pound bomb, but does take longer to launch and also doesn't have the two 100 pound bombs or the extra aviation buff that the Suez has. But yeah, I mean, you're going to be stuck using basically that plane for her main slot. And oh, did I mention she only gets one of them? And if you if you don't know this for people who may be newer and don't know how planes work, but typically like most carriers are going to have like two or three fighters in one slot. They'll have 332 three, or something like that. So that's a total of eight planes. And like Shinano has nine planes. This girl has two planes and their seaplanes so bad of course you can swap out one of the seaplanes for a destroyer gun which honestly given her poor aviation and it has to be a seaplane i might just take the dd gun i mean it doesn't it won't have the range to actually do anything so that's actually a bad idea but like seriously i guess it helps if you want to use her in like somewhere that has suicide boats i don't know at least she has anti-air guns so Wow, okay, so this is terrible. Let's see, let's hopefully it has a skill that's like super uber broken. All right, every eight seconds after the battle starts, fire a special barrage made of black and white chess pieces. Interesting, okay. Barrage uh, scales off the skill level. An enemy that's been hit by four of one type of chess piece, so four white or four black, receive a debuff according to the color, basically. Okay, if they've been hit by four black chess pieces, reduce speed by 30% for two seconds. We have a barrage every eight seconds. Actually, eight seconds is actually a really short time for the barrage so this does has a has a lot of barrages coming out but still you gotta you gotta lock up four barrages of the same color and then it's gonna reduce speed by 30 percent for two seconds two seconds really and only 30 percent you literally have like ships out there that are full-on freezing for two seconds guaranteed and this one's like we gotta stack up like a bunch of the same colored chess pieces and you'll get like only 30 percent reduced speed all right black is a bust if white chess pieces is gonna reduce damage so they deal, I assume they deal 15% less damage for two seconds. They might not even shoot a single shot in that two seconds, depending on what you're actually hitting. All right, this skill is trash, and this basically probably means that this ship is probably going to be collection only, <laughs> unless unless this last skill is a savior. Oh my. Uh, when launching an airstrike, additionally launch an aviation barrage. Barrage strength is determined by the skill level. So she's really a barrage ship out here because she obviously got no planes, which I guess makes sense. If every ship in the fleet is Chinese. All right, this is for the total mono Chinese memes, which I guess makes sense. You would never use this ship outside of mono Chinese anyway because it's terrible. 
So let's see. What do we get? She strengthens the barrage. Okay, cool. And every 20 seconds after the battle, randomly buff a friendly ship by giving it an increase of 10% damage. So it's random. And it's only one ship, and it's only 10%. And it's, of course, got to be a Dragon Emperor ship, so not particularly the best damage-dealing ships anyway. All right, this ship is garbage. A hot garbage ship. But it does, it does mean that we can actually make a full Chinese fleet, so I will probably pick it up and dig for it just, just for being able to do that before we get into the retrofits we actually have a new ship junio meta obviously she's not coming out with this update she'll be coming out when we reset the cruise mission season but just want to bring her up honestly stat wise she looks almost identical to Hio meta which is her sister so okay cool moving on she's got a barrage plane barrage every 20 seconds and then when she's sorted with her sister, she increases her aviation and her accuracy by 10%. Uh, and if she's equipped with IJN planes, she gets plus 12% aviation, which she's only got like 330 aviation, so not actually good anyway. Um, if she's not equipped with any IJN planes, which, I mean, if you're using her, you're probably going to have IJN planes on her, but then she gets anti-air and evasion. I don't know why you would want those. I mean okay survivability i guess but like not a tanky ship she's got less than seven thousand health and she's medium armor and then she has her operation siren skill when she's fighting the boss fleets she increases her damage dealt by six percent pretty marginal i mean garbage collection if you're collecting metas but it, it is what it is so in terms of the new ships the the high chi class probably ironically the best despite the other two being srs turbidus and bristol being srs anyway but What's most important is the retrofits. So let's let's go take a look at the retrofits. All right, before I get into the retrofits, I actually was taking a look at them and I noticed that basically I'm going to have to explain the missiles before the retrofits are going to make sense. So we're going to talk about equipment right now. There's only two new equipment. We have the FBA-19 plane and we have the SY-1 missile. So to get the FBA plane out of the way, it's basically just a seaplane. It goes for basically Chen Hai. It's not good. You're not going to even use it on her. Yeah, and it's got a 500 pound bomb. So there's no reason you'd use this plane ever but let's it and it has nothing to do with missiles so we can just throw that one out of there it's collection only you can pick it up from the world boss as a as like a collection tier part of it if you are somebody who collects equipment anyway moving on to the sy missile this you can pick up in the core data shop starting in february this is going to be uh something that you definitely are going to need it actually goes in the torpedo slot for the the ddgs the guided missile destroyers which is what the two new retro Retrofits are going to have in terms of damage i really just want to put this out here 264 times four is the damage output for it and to put in perspective for the torpedoes the like best torpedoes out here are probably doing like 210 times four so like this is going to be more damage than any torpedo that you can have the interesting part in the modifiers is it actually looks like a salvo which is interesting so torpedoes tend to do better against heavy armor and worse against light armor this one is inversed it's like shells which do better against light armor than they do heavy armor so that's interesting the range is phenomenal and it boosts torpedo stat which makes sense because it goes in the torpedo slot and the rate of fire is a little bit slow, but you can fix that with reload. So basically this actually feels like a main gun. Like you're adding a battleship gun to your destroyer is kind of what it feels like in the torpedo slot. And it's going to do probably more damage, at least on base. Obviously the catch here is that it's only limited to ships that are like in the DDG form. But in theory, like if Shimikaze ever became a, uh, a guided destroy uh, a guided missile destroyer you put this on her and oh boy things are gonna go crazy so anyway i just wanted to put that out there so this is what the missile uh, destroyers are going to use and it does a lot more base dps and it kind of works like almost like a battleship gun in the way that it operates all right so we're moving on to the two new retrofits on shan and cheng chung their two sisters have not got a retrofit but i would be shocked if they don't get retrofits into these guided missile destroyers so the first thing and we talked about this a lot is once you retrofit them, they're going to be changed into guided missile destroyers. So let's start with Ashan. Although, honestly, I'm pretty sure both of these ships are upgraded in the exact same way. So in terms of stats, they all get boosts up a little bit. The speed boosts are kind of funny. They all get changed into a guided missile destroyer, which switches out their missile slot 
are their torpedo slot for a missile slot. Additionally, they're going to get a main gun plus one, which is amazing. Of course, their main gun efficiency had to drop, and, and that makes sense. They would be super broken if they didn't do that. But they get two, twice the guns now, so even though their efficiency dropped a little bit, actually it dropped a lot of bit, but they're still going to be doing more damage output in the long run. And they also got an AoE enhanced, so that's good i guess in terms of the first skill it's going to be unaffected so they both are going to uh have their first skills the same and then they get this second skill added and they're a little bit different so i'll, I'll read ashan's first so ashan's skill reads at the start of the battle receive one charge of the guided missile strike during the battle self-received burn damage is reduced by 15 percent the burn duration is reduced by three percent every 15 seconds during the battle launch a barrage barrage strength is determined by the skills level enemy hit by the barrage will receive armor break for six seconds so we get our missile basically preloaded uh we basically get like a fire extinguisher for free just on her i mean a weak version and then we also get armor break can't be mad about anything in that additional skill she's also going to be getting missiles and she's going to get a main gun plus one so honestly ashan really good work there <laughs> kind of kind of weird because i i almost want her to be in the front i almost want to keep her in the front so that she can actually be like a gunboat almost but i guess if you're going full chinese you got to put her in the back i don't really see why i'd want to put her in the back especially with like Oh my gosh, that health pool is so minuscule. It's like a quarter. It's like a quarter of what like most good battleships are going to have in the 9 10,000 range. All right, let's move on to Cheng Chun's skill. So she's basically the same all the way through, except for her extra skill is going to be a little bit different. So at the start of the battle, receive one charge of guided missile strike, just like her sister. Self-receive burn reduced by 15% and the burn duration by three, three seconds. Every 15 seconds during the battle, launch a barrage. That's all the same. But the difference being enemies hit by that barrage will receive 8% more damage from torpedo-based attacks. The way that's worded makes me believe that it is specifically set so that missiles are counted as torpedo based attacks because missiles scale off torpedo stat for those of you who don't know so good torpedo stat is what's needed for strong missiles so i would i would say eight percent more damage for that so we have armor break in the first one and then we have a damage increase for the missiles in the second one yeah i don't know what to say both of these ships are very good now these are certainly the two strongest ships coming out of this event yeah i mean i don't know if they're like meta defining but like anshan is really exciting I mean, Cheng Chung is good too. I'm really curious to see what other missile destroyers do. But yeah, these ships are good. That's what I'm trying to say. And this video is getting long, so I don't need to ramble too much more. So my overall takes here is all the new ships are pretty meh. The the best ship or that the one that stands out the most to me is probably Hai Chi. In terms of the retrofits though, both of them are really strong. The missile that we can equip with them is really strong. Of course, Chinese mono fleet exists now. Honestly, I'd probably use Hai Tian in that version with Ninghai, Yatsen, Ashan, Cheng, Chung because they can now be put in the back line. And then, and then we we have to we have to use Chen Hai. <laughs> There's like no other option for mono, so you can actually use something like that. And uh, it probably won't be that good, but all of you uh, China stands can can uh, build that. Uh, in terms of the world boss, just you know, clear EX modes. There's a lot of equipment there, but nothing here is too pressing. I don't think if you miss something you're gonna be like really out of it of course you need to make sure you get the retrofit items for the uh the two retrofits but and then chen hai if you want to make mono chinese but most of this is pretty relaxed i'm expecting a much bigger event coming in the future and of course we're going to be getting the russian rerun event coming soon as well so i'm excited I'm very happy for this event lunar new year is always a fun one so take care guys thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time i'll probably be streaming this weekend so keep a lookout for that and bye bye